Hello again. Welcome to Usha's Call with yours truly, Myra Waiters. Uh, we stopped in the book of Ezra 2, 2 Ezra, and uh, kind of cut it off on verse 14. But I'm going to pick it up on this one because we have another subject to add to our teaching. Uh, so get your pseudopocryphus out, and let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 14. We're going to begin reading at verse number 1. And what would I call this today? I would call this, and it may change, but I, I see this as being the earth is getting old and weak with age. The earth is getting old and weak with age. And help us understand some of the things that are going on. Other than, of course, we know judgment's going on. We know that. We know pestilence. Are, are here. But I also want to explain some things to you that Yah had explained to his prophet a long time ago. And I hopefully that this will also help us to get a grip of what's going on around us with all the variables and all of the storms and the crackings and the, the moving and the earthquakes and the storms and the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the different things. Let's look at verse 1. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak. And behold, there came a voice out of the bush over against me and said, Ezra, Ezra, I said unto him, Master, and I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifest, reveal myself unto Moses. I like that. Y'all has this thing with the bush. I, when you want to be, well, I don't know if everybody would like to have that, but it would be great maybe just have that flame and that voice coming from it. Anyway, that's me. Mm. All right. I did manifest myself unto Moses and talk with him. When my people served in Egypt or were slaves in Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the mount, that's Mount Sinai, of where I held him by me by me, in my presence, a long season or a long time, and told him many wondrous things, and showed him the secrets of the times, or gave him prophecy of the coming time and the end, and commanded him, saying, these words shalt thou declare, and these shalt thou hide. These things you can share. And then he had another group of things he could not. They were to be hidden. And now I say unto thee, that thou lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed, and the dreams that thou hast seen, and the interpretations which thou hast heard, for thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son, that's capital S-O-N, and we know where that is, that's in paradise, and with such as be like thee until the times ended. So what is this about? This is the Most High explaining to Ezra. I'm going to give you some things to to write down that are coming upon this earth, but you won't be here to see it because you will die before then. Remember we are talking about, I think the first program, you know, blessed are those that are here through the troubles and tribulations that have not been taught. Okay, so that's what he's saying. He's saying you won't be here, but write these things down for those that are going to be here. Verse 10. <clears throat> for the world hath lost his youth. You know, when you lose you, your youth, you know, once I was young, he says, but now I'm old, but never have I seen a righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. You're not going to stay young forever, and neither is this earth, for it has already aged. It's the old earth now in the plan of the Most High. He goes on to say, the world's lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. The times begin now 
to wax old. So he was saying, this is coming upon earth. It's not going to always be a young earth. This earth's going to grow old. It's old. You can tell it's old. Things are, animals are dying. Trees are dying. Huh? Extinct. We have extinction among many animals. The earth is cracking like a woman with stretch marks when she's carrying a child. We've got things, um, a volcano shooting off. We, we, the, the earth is tired. And one of the things the earth is tired of is tired of sin and sinners and wicked folks. And it's crying out for justice. And hell is enlarging itself for all of the wicked, all of the liars and fornicators and adulterers, all the backbiters, whoremongers, all them that lie and do not the truth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Verse 11. For the world is divided into 12 parts, and the 10 parts are of it are gone. What? Ain't gone already. And half of a tenth part. Half of a tenth part. And there remaineth that which is after the half of a tenth part. That's what's left. And the two. The two and a half parts. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Comfort such as them as be in trouble. So I'm here right now to comfort. I'm here to comfort you that are worried. Put down that worry burden is not necessary. Those of you who are, don't let the world panic you because it's panicked. Don't let the stock market throw you off. Don't let coronavirus throw you off. Don't let uh, the storms throw you off. Don't let the tornadoes throw you off. Don't let the earthquakes throw you off. Whatever you do, be comforted knowing that you're in the most high because you're in Yerusha. And now, here's what he's saying. I'm talking about those who want to survive this, those who have been left behind. Renounce corruption. You know, re renouncing something doesn't just mean I don't agree. It means pulling out not having anything to do with the corruption of this world. Politics. Huh? All of it, sports is, all of this stuff is corrupt. Did you know that? It's corrupt because the people behind it are corrupt. I'm not saying everyone in it is corrupt, but it's what's behind it. It's a deviation. It's a smoke screen to keep us from seeing truth. Therefore, it is not the will of the Most High that you be indulgent into these things in this world. So you renounce it by staying away from it. That's how you renounce it. Let go, it says. You want to make it through these ter terrible times you're entering now? Then let go of these mortal thoughts, of these carnal thoughts, of these carnal way of thinking, flesh, pleasing flesh. Let go. Cast it away. Not just let go. Make distance between you. So that you'll never be near it again. Cast it away the burdens of men. You know, men want to burden you down with worry. Burden you down with things that you don't need to be burdened down with. By telling you all kind of stupid stuff. Lies. Most of them lies. They don't know what they're talking about half the time. You need to hear from your father. He has the complete truth. He says, I'm just telling you how to survive, okay? This is what this is about. Your father's telling you through his word. He said, and put off the weak nature. Hmm? Put off the weak nature, that nature that's contrary to the will and purpose of Yah in your life. What he has said he means, what he means he says. Anything corrupt is not of Yah. I don't care how cute she is, how ugly he is, how pretty they are, how toe down. It don't make no, how smart, how brilliant, how successful, how rich, how poor. It doesn't matter. You have one master. Master. 
and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy. Verse 15. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee or weighty. Not worrying about bills and how you're going to eat and what you're going to wear. Didn't you? We should tell you not to worry about those things. Then he says he sees a sparrow. And if he cares about a sparrow, he knows when he falls out of that tree, when it's his life, little life is over, he catches him with his eye. He knows it. Well, how much more is he can take care of his little animals until the day that they have to go? Why can't he take care of you? And you're his child. You're his children. He's going to take care of you. You believe it? So he says, hmm, he'll take care of you. So don't be, be heavy laden. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Haste thee to flee from these times. I want you to see that again. Hasten to flee or run with all your might. Just like Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife with all of his might. Because she was trying to break down his will. And what did he do? He flew. He, he didn't just walk away quickly. He took off. All right? He's saying for you to do the same thing. He says, flee from these times. Well, these times are gratification of the flesh, no matter which way you look at it. These times are all about selfishness. These times are all about uh, uh, carrying out grudges and, 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 and killing people in mass and and, and, and beating up on and, and killing spouses and children, burning them up in cars and drowning them in oceans. And just this is a wicked, wicked time we're living in. Telling you, everything that Yah says not to do, it's okay. He, and I say this, the world can do whatever it wants to do. I'm talking to you, Yasserel, who have made your, your, your first, first, first important Yah. That's the way. Other people can, I never tell people what they can and cannot do, except I talk to our people. These things that the world is doing are not of Yah whether it comes to marriage, whether it comes to boyfriend, girlfriend, shacking up, getting drunk, partying, all Listen, that's the world, and they have a right to do it. Nobody needs to tell me, hey, I don't bother them. But you, the ones who say you know the most high, you're certainly not doing these things, are you? Now that is a contradiction, and you will have to pay for it. For judgment be begins in the house of the most high. All right, let's move on. It says, you drop the thoughts, you flee from these times for yet greater evils. Here's what I want you to know today. Greater evils are coming. As a woman in childbirth, Yusha said, her pains get closer together and stronger. And I've been telling you that, and they have, since we have been talking, others as well, not taking any credit, not any. These things have come to pass. The evil will get greater. You think it's hard today? Wait till next next week, next month. You think it's rough today? This is this compared to tomorrow? Don't even think about it. He's saving you out of it. For yet greater evils than those which thou have seen. You ain't seen nothing, in other words. Something great is on the horizon right now as I speak. Well, I, I, you know, look at this way. You know, people are making, a, 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 well, I guess to, it, to the world it is a big thing, this, this coronavirus. But now we just had a terrible storm in, in Nashville. Can you imagine you're, you're trying to help people that are in distress right now? How do you know they don't have the coronavirus? See, and these things are going to keep coming. And you're going to have to get out there and help people. You're going to walk around with fear. you got to get out there and do what you got to do. You're an emergency worker, first responders, all that. Put your trust in your ua and go on out there and do what you got to do. If that's your job. But you don't have to walk in fear because the rest of the world is walking in fear because y'all is making an example of us. 
He's showing the world who we are through these tragedies that you don't seem to understand that. And you go against him by saying, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. No, 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 no. Save out of it. Save out of it. Save out of it. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. That's what we pray. Let's go on. So much the more shall evils increase. Here it says it again. That's that's put that's 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 the light here. That's telling you this is truth upon them that what? That dwell therein. That's not talking about you. For the time is fled far away. In other words, it's been a, it's, the time is getting away from us now. And 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 Yah has left his calling card. And leasing is hard at hand. And for now hastens the vision to come. Hasten the the um, vision to come, which thou hast seen. So when it comes, it just comes all of a sudden. And things have been happening all of a sudden. All of a sudden. Everybody's quiet, and all of a sudden everything is shaking, out of control. Everything's fine, a mudslide comes and wipes away homes and families. Everything's quiet in several tornadoes, not one, several touchdown at one time. No warning. No warning. All of a sudden the, 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 the top of a mountain blows off. No, 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 very little warning, if any. And whole communities are wasted. No warning. Storms coming to take islands out of the ocean. No warning. These things are coming quickly. We have to be in, a, in, a, in the right frame that Yah has set. And that's why I'm reading you his word. He is preparing you to live and, and, and abide within the end times. All right. Verse 19. Then answered I before thee and said, Behold, Most High, I will go as thou hast commanded me. And I'll reprove the people which are present, but they that shall be born afterward, he says, who shall admonish them? Who's going to warn them of these things? Thus the world is set in darkness. What does that mean? No understanding. Well, the word says all nations have been deceived. And they that dwell therein are what? Without light. What does that mean? They don't have the knowledge of the Most High that only he can give by his set-apart spirit. You have it if you have his spirit. Verse 21, for thy law is burnt. He's talking to you, Yehudis, Yaswalites. No man knoweth the things that are done of thee. They've forgotten all the great wonders that hasn't been passed down. Why? Because we were scattered people. Or the work that shall begin. Are you aware of the work that's begun? But if I have found... Yes, uh, uh, Ezra said, grace before you. Send the set-apart spirit unto me. And that's what we need to pray. Father, send the set-apart spirit unto me. And I shall, what? He says, I'm going to write these things down. I'm going to write them down so that later on, when these things are going on, your people will have this to read like I'm doing to you right now, for you, that you can now read for yourself. He says, I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning. He's going to go all the way back and bring it up to, 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 the, to the future that's coming. We're written in thy law that men may find thy path. Why? That we would find the right way. Because there are many ways, and every way don't lead to you. And they that which will live in the latter days may what? May live. If all this horrible thing is going on in the latter days, what is he talking about? He's saying you're going to be able to live through it. That's what he's saying. By the knowledge of his word, 
by the power of his spirit, by faith in the most high, you're going to make it through. So don't whimper and don't cry, and you do not complain. I'm going to read something to drop down to the 32nd verse. For if, uh, 32. And for as much as he is a righteous judge, and we know Yah, Yah is the righteous judge, he took from you in the time the thing that he had given you. He took what? He took all of the rituals and rites that we can no longer do because we were disobedient. Why? Because he had the temple, he let the temple be destroyed. And Rome desecrated the city, burnt it down. And we, we had to flee. If those were didn't flee, taken, we were taken as slaves. Those weren't taken as slaves. We were killed, raped, murdered. He goes on to say, um, and now are ye here and your brethren among you shall be kept alive and another death you shall obtain mercy. And after death, I should say, you shall obtain mercy for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Do you hear this? We're living in a time where righteous will be man righteousness will be manifest. Why? There's so much darkness and gloom. We shine like bright lights, and the works of the ungodly shall what? It shall be declared. It's going to be declared, and it's going to be judged. It's going to be judged. And the last verse I want to drop down to is verse 44. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. Do you hear that? We got some books <laughs> that we don't have yet. Let's pray for those books. And it came to pass when 40 days were fulfilled that the highest spake saying, the first that thou hast written published openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. Ah, but keep the 70 last. Keep the 70 last. I don't know how we got 66. Anyway that thou mayest deliver them only to such as, what? Be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. And with that, we will pray. Father, we thank you for your word, helping us to prepare for what is on this earth at this time, to be do, do, to do diligence, as the five wise virgins, to not take anything for granted, but to fear and obey you, to be obedient, to seek you out, to study, to show ourselves approved unto you, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, to please you in every way. And we rest then in you. And whatever comes, the heavens may fall, the earth may crack, and the waves may roar, and the fire may burst upon the scene, but we know we shall be safe in you. Thank you, Abba. In your Usha's name, Amen. And until next time, Shalomah.